Okay, welcome everyone. Um, today we will discuss about um, the business combination, specifically the merger and consolidation. Okay, so, so let's define first what is business combination. So according to PFRS3, okay guys, um, remember that um, the standard okay, that is um, used Okay, to account for the business combination or or yung or the standards that is being used okay for business combination is the PFRS3 okay so according to PFRS3 okay business combination daw is um okay, business combination as a transaction or other events in which an acquirer okay the acquirer means um siya yung ano um, um the one who will buy or the one who will acquire Okay, um, the business of another entity. Okay, obtains control. Take note of this, ah, control. Okay, of one or more businesses. So transactions sometimes referred to as true mergers or mergers of equals. Also, our business combination. Okay, so what's the reason why um business combination takes place? Okay, so number one, um, there are companies, especially small companies. Um, which has a bigger potential in terms of their um, capacity, in terms of their product. Okay, um, that's why um, other big companies okay, acquires um, those small companies which has a uh, potential. Okay, so um, that's the reason why um, businesses um, that uh, that offers quality standards or quality products, na medyo um, what do you call this? Um, medyo walang capital or medyo hindi liquid or cannot be um, continued in, in, the, in a long term or in a long run. Okay? Ang mga big companies okay, usually acquires those small companies um, to be part uh, um, of their assets. Okay? So yung mga companies na maliliit na yun um, will become um uh, part of those big companies okay and because of that action okay that business combination um those small um companies um gives additional value to those um big companies okay that's why most of the and take note uh, business combination um only applies or this pfrs3 um only applies to those corporation na mga business combinations okay so, kasi pagdating sa partnership or sole proprietorship, walang business combination that is happening. Okay? Or it's very impossible. It's because um, sole proprietorship um, only, di ba, kung um, once na maklose yung sole proprietorship, automatically the business will ano, liquidate or mawawala. Okay? Now, um, what are the examples okay the common examples that ha, yung mga actual na, na, na nangyari na business combination um, number 1 if you can remember the um Jollibee and the Mang Inasal okay merger the, uh, yun yung isa sa mga business combinations na medyo sikat sa news at their time no? the Jollibee Food Corporation acquires the uh, Mang Inasal because of the potential ni Mang Inasal into the market, di ba? If you can, ano, napansin nyo before, um, every time na may Jollibee, may Mang Inasal sa tabi or sa loob ng mall, okay? Which is um, malapit sa, ano, sa Jollibee. So, yung move ni Jollibee, para hindi mawala yung value niya or para wala siyang competition pagdating sa industry na meron siya, so, the Jollibee acquires Mang Inasal. Okay? At first, those 70% of the shares of Mang Inasal. Then, later on, after several years, um, binili niya yung 30%. And take note that yung 30% na share um, is much higher than those 70% ni Mang Inasal. Okay? So, uh, billions of pesos yung, I think, nabili yung price nung mang inasal okay so another merger in, uh, merger or business combination that happened in the Philippines is the PNB the Philippine National Bank and the Allied Bank so if you can remember sa avenue dati 
before may allied bank, di ba? So now, yung allied bank, okay, um was acquires was acquired by the Philippine National Bank. So kina um the Philippine National Bank, okay, buys all the properties and assets ni Allied Bank. Okay? Yun yun, yun yung business combination na yan. Okay? So, now, so, what are the methods of combination or types of combination in terms of business combination? Ha? Okay? So, number one um, is the acquisition of net assets. Okay? So, assets or less liabilities. So, if you, you can remember sa basic accounting nyo, when we say net assets, okay, it is assets less liabilities. Okay, so the books of the acquired, the acquired naman is the acquiry or yung um, parang bibilhen or i-acquire ni acquirer. Okay, so company are closed out and its assets and liabilities are transferred to the books of the acquirer. Okay, si acquirer naman siya yung bibili or mag-a-acquire kay acquiry. Okay, so acquiring or surviving company. So in this um, aspect of combination, sometimes one er enterprise acquires another enterprise's net assets through direct negotiations with its management. Okay, so another reason bakit nagkakaroon ng um, business combination, um, it's because um, some small companies, um, if they want to grow, or they want to expand and they have no capacity to do it. So they sometimes um, they offer themselves to the bigger companies okay, in order for, no, for that capital amounts na ano, ma ma magagather nila to expand their business. Okay? So another types of methods of combination is the acquisition of common stock or stock acquisition. Okay, so the books of the acquirer and the acquiry remain intact and consolidated financial statements are prepared periodically. But this will be ano, um, expanded, explained further on the succeeding ano, um, chapters or videos na gagawin ko. Okay? Now, we will focus uh, only on this acquisition of net assets. Okay? So ano yung pinaka-difference ano, pinaka between the two? Okay, when we say of acquisition of net assets, okay, um, the acquirer, acquirer acquires 100%, okay, 100% of the acquiry. While the acquisition of common stock or stock acquisition, um, it is not necessarily na 100% yung i-acquire. As long na merong control, okay, so balik tayo sa financial accounting, when we say of control, 50% um, plus 1, Okay, yung threshold dun sa financial accounting. Once that you acquire the 51% of a company um, which gives you um, control over that company. Okay, tawag dun acquisition of common stock. Okay, dun siya mafo-fall sa acquisition of common stock. Okay, but um, we'll only focus here on the acquisition of net assets. Yung 100% na i-acquire ni acquirer si acquiry. Okay. Now, so acquisition of net assets or assets less liabilities, okay? These are the features of a net asset acquisition, okay? So the acquirer acquires from another enterprise all or most of the net assets of the other enterprise okay, for cash, for property, for debt instruments, and equity instruments, okay? Common or preferred stock or a combination thereof or it's like um i acquire the acquirer yung lahat ng assets will assume all the liabilities and the equity of the acquiry okay so the acquirer must acquire take nota ang sabi ko kanina 100% of the net assets of the acquired acquiry or the acquired company okay and it only involves when the acquirer company survives. Okay? So later, may ibibigay akong example of the different types of ano, net assets na acquisition. Okay? Now, acquisition of net assets are classified into two 
Dalawa. What is it? First is the statutory merger. And the second is the statutory consolidation. So let's discuss first ano yung merger na tinatawag. So entails that acquiring or the acquirer company survives whereas the acquired or the acquiry company or companies ceases to exist as a separate legal entity. Although it may be continued as a separate division of the acquiring company. So when we say of um, statutory merger, I will give you a formula. If company A, okay, um, is the acquirer, acquirer, ah, then he, uh, it will acquire company B, okay. So the remaining company, it's either A or B, depending kung sino yung acquirer sa kanila. If company A is the acquirer, company B is the acquiry or yung ia acquire, okay. So yung matitira for that company is company A only. While, if company B is the acquirer and company A is the acquiry, okay, the remaining company will be okay, company B. Okay? Now, ano naman yung statutory consolidation? When we say statutory consolidation, it results when a new corporation is formed to acquire two or more other corporations. So the acquired corporations then cease to exist as separate <clears throat> legal entities. Okay, so I will give another formula. So company A, dito naman sa statutory consolidation, the company A, okay, um, for example, company A will acquire company B. Okay, the remaining company or mag-form ng another company, okay, which is the company C. Kanina sa statutory merger, the company A and the company B, yung matitira sa kanila, it's either A or B. While dito sa statutory consolidation, company A, if he, uh, it acquires company B, okay, another company will exist. Okay? And the acquiry, yung in-acquire, okay, mawawala yon, and the company C will be remained. Okay? Now, so the acquisition method. The acquisition method naman, ito yung way on how to account Okay, how to record the transaction for the net asset acquisition, uh, net asset uh, business combination. Okay, now the acquisition method is applied in the acquisition date, which is the date the acquirer obtains control of the acquiry. So the acquisition method approaches a business combination from the perspective of the acquirer and not of the acquiry. So the entity that obtains control of the other entity in the business combination. Okay, now, how do we measure or how do we account for the uh, business combination? Okay, under the acquisition method, all assets and liabilities are identified and reported at fair value. So, for sure, um, you know already what is a fair value, di ba? Because of the financial accounting. So, most of you know uh, about the fair value on what is a fair value. Okay, na we cannot just um, simply say na company A acquires company B, then automatically, yun na yun. Okay? So we need to account, we need to identify here what are the things that we need to consider in accounting for that business combination. Okay? Now, accounting procedures for a business combination. So the required method of accounting for a business combination under paragraph 4, take note again, ha, PFRS 3. Okay? Wala, um, there's no other standard that uh, manages the business combination. Only the PFRS 3. Okay? That is the standard that will be followed in accounting for the business combination. Okay? Now, under the acquisition method, though, the general approach to accounting business combination is a five-step process. So what are those? What are the five-step process na yun? So number one, according to PFRS 3, we need to first identify the acquirer okay? on the two companies that is given by the problem. Who is the acquirer? Okay, it is very, very important. Um, usually, in the problems, okay, in the um, um, board examination or examination or 
um, sa book, okay, sa mga book ng mga exercises, um, it is very easy to identify who is the acquirer. Kasi um, most of the time, the problem tells um, us who is the acquirer. Okay? But is it is very, very hard in the ac uh, actual accounting process because you need to ano you, um, you need to see as an accountant okay you need to check sino ba yung ina-acquire sino ba yung i-acquire okay yung company um, na in-employ ka or kung saan ka na-employ being an accountant um, you need to know what is the stand of your company si acquirer ka ba or si acquiree okay so it's very hard but on the problems or in our book um, it is uh, mostly given, okay? The same with the acquisition date, okay? The step two, or the second step, is we need doubt to determine the acquisition date, okay? Sa problem, um, we just need to analyze and we need to ano, to check the dates kung kailan ba yung business combination na nangyari, okay? But on the actual um, procedure, on the actual world, okay, it is very, very hard to determine the acquisition date. Okay? It's because um, maraming dates na, ano, maraming dates na parang ginagamit sa actual. Uh, and as an accountant, you also need to analyze that kung kailan ba yung actual na um, business combination na nangyari. Okay? So the step three, which is Ito yung sinusolve natin sa mga problems, okay? So, we need doubt to calculate the fair value of the purchase consideration transferred, okay? How much or ano-ano ba, okay, ang binigay kay acquiree, okay, ni acquirer? Or what are the things that is used um, to acquire the acquiree? Okay, cash ba yun? Uh, Stocks? Okay, properties, okay, you need to identify. And once you identify that, okay, we need to recognize. Okay, pag sinabi natin sa financial accounting, when we say recognize, we ano, um, we identify. Okay, we need to separate. Okay, separate the asset, we separate the liabilities, we separate the equity. Okay, and we measure daw. Okay, sa financial accounting, when we say measure, okay, we give value to those things na na-recognize natin. Okay, because there are things that we need to recognize and there are things that we do not need to recognize. Okay, and those things that we recognize, we need to measure. Okay, we need to measure down the identifiable assets and liabilities of the business. Whose business? Both the acquirer and the acquiree. Right? <clears throat> and the last, okay, so we need to recognize thou and measure either goodwill or a gain from a bargain purchase. So I will explain la later what is a goodwill and what is a gain from a bargain purchase, okay, if either exists in the transaction. Okay, and um, this is the common question um, sa mga board examination, sa mga exams, sa mga problems, okay. Um, the question, uh, the problem will ask, um, how much is the goodwill? Okay, so if walang goodwill, is there a gain from a bargain purchase? Okay, it's because when we say a, a business combination, okay, it's either my goodwill yan or gain from bargain purchase. Um, in our financial accounting, if you can remember, um, sinasabi don that goodwill is ano. Diba, hindi natin ina-account or we, we, we are not accounting for the goodwill. Okay? But except for the business combination, it is the only one standard, okay, the PFR is 3, that permits okay, the measuring of goodwill. Okay? Um, to I think, gin-explain man yan sa, ano, um, sa book, okay, sa financial accounting na book, that um, goodwill is not accounted in the uh, in the books especially in the financial accounting except for um, if there is a business combination that is happening okay once na may business combination goodwill is usually 
measured. Okay. Now, if an acquirer gains control by purchasing less than 100%, yung sa second na ano, type of combination sa mga succeeding chapters, yung number four daw, okay, we need to recognize the non-controlling interest. Okay? But we will have a separate discussion on this. Okay? Now, we need to identify daw the acquirer. According to PFRS3, states that the acquirer DAO is the entity that obtains control of the acquiry. Okay? Very basic, but in the actual, it's very hard to determine. So paragraph 6 requires that each business combination, one of the combining entities should be identified as the acquirer. Why? It's because um, it's very important to identify the acquirer in order to know what accounts will be used. Okay? Because most of the accounts... Direct um, the books, the journal entries, okay, mostly non kay acquirer. May sa kanya mapupunta most of the entries, okay. Um, because yun nga, yung sinasabi kanina sa mga uh, uh, meaning niya, kapag yun nga, net, net assets yung gagamitin or yung merger or consolidation. consolidation um, only one company will um, remain, which is the acquirer. Okay. The next step is to determine the acquisition date. Okay. So now, um, according to PFR history again, acquisition date is the date on which the acquirer obtains control of the acquiry. Okay. So a business combination involves the joining together of assets under the control of a specific entity. So therefore, the business combination occurs at the date of the assets or net assets are under the control of the acquirer. Okay? So when we say of acquisition date, is it is the date where the control okay, of those net assets is transferred um, from the acquiree to acquirer. Okay? So this date is the acquisition date. Yan do yung date na kung saan all of the net assets of the acquiree goes to the acquirer. Kumbaga, nagkaroon na ng control si acquirer to acquiry. Okay. Now, how do we calculate the fair values of the consideration transferred? Okay. Now, according to PFRS3, so the consideration transferred is number one, measured at fair value at acquisition date. Okay. Why do we need to specify that the fair value daw um, that be used or should be used is the uh, at the acquisition date, right? Um, because there is a tendency, na for example, hindi sa acquisition date na fair value ng gagamitin. Um, there is a tendency that the fair value will change. Okay, so it is very important that the fair value that we are going to use is on the acquisition date. Okay, it is exactly at the acquisition date. Okay. So it is calculated daw as the sum of the acquisition date, fair values of the assets transferred by the acquiry. When we say of assets, cash, that lot ng assets, cash, assets, um, property, plant, and equipment. Okay, the liabilities incurred by the acquirer to former former owners of the acquiry. Okay, and the equity interest issued by the acquirer. Okay, now in a specific exchange. The consideration transferred to the acquirer could include just one form of consideration. Yes, pwede na si acquirer isang consideration lang yung gagamitin or isang um, asset lang yung gagamitin. Like for example, cash lang lahat. So um, it will acquire company B. Okay, Company A is the acquirer. It will acquire company B by just uh, purely cash. Okay, But could equally well consist of a number of forms of um, assets such as cash and other assets or the property plant and equipment. Okay? A business or a subsidiary. Contingent consideration. Okay? Equity instruments and debt instruments. Options, um, warrants, and member interests. So, yun. Uh, by the way, um, there is a separate um, video that I will make um, for the ano, calculations, mga computations. Uh, for this time, theories muna. Okay? It's very important um, to know the basics of everything. 
So the basic will on, always start with the theories. Okay. Now, the next step is we need to recognize DAO and measure the assets acquired and the liabilities assumed by the acquirer. Okay. So PFRS3 sets out basic principles for the recognition and measurement of identifiable assets acquired. Okay, and not controlling interest. Having established those principles, the PFRS3 provides detailed application for specific assets and liabilities and a number of limited exceptions to the general principles. Yes, may mga ano. Um, it is very important here sa recognition and measurement, the journal entries. Okay. So under the acquisition method, the acquirer is required to, number one, recognize um, identifiable assets and liabilities separately from goodwill okay um, we should always separate pag account yung mga um, consideration na transfer from goodwill okay and measure such assets and liabilities at their fair values on the date of acquisition always remember this class ha? fair values on the date of acquisition okay now so measuring and recognizing goodwill okay so the price paid for the entity will be determined in part by its earnings ability so the acquirer may or may not choose to operate the entity in the same manner, but regardless of the acquirer's plan, the price to be paid will take into the account the acquirer's future earnings potential. Okay, so if the entity has been successful, okay, so the acquirer may have to pay a price, okay, which is higher than the aggregate fair value of the identifiable net assets. So on the other hand, if the entity has not been successful, the price may be less than the fair value of the net identifiable assets, but not normally less than the liquidating value of the net assets. Okay. Now, so let's go to goodwill. What is a goodwill? Okay. So according to PFRS3, a goodwill DAO is the, okay, the acquirer shall recognize goodwill as of the acquisition date measured as the excess of one over two below. This is the formula of computing the goodwill. Um, but before that, let's explain first what is a goodwill. Okay, um, a goodwill um, normally occurs, okay, if the value, okay, of the acquiry, okay, is higher than its actual value. Well, what does it mean? Okay, for example, if the current value of the acquiry is one peso. Okay, so the acquirer um, sees, he sees that um, the value, the one peso value of that acquiry, okay, is not enough. It is higher. Let's say, for example, sabi ni acquirer, no, no, you are not valued at one peso. You are valued at five pesos. Okay, so if that, um, if that um, activity happens or if that event happens, um, a four pesos goodwill exists, diba? Why? It's because the fair value ni, ni acquiry is piso lang, but the acquirer see that company at five pesos. Okay? So meaning, he is four pesos higher than its actual value. Okay? Uh, it's because it is very, very, ano guys, uh, very tricky, very hard to check if there is a goodwill within that company. Okay? Like, for example, the Jollibee. Okay? Let's say, for example, yung Jollibee. Um, even though the, the price of Jollibee, when you say price, the stock price, ah, um, if the value na meron si Jollibee ngayon is 100 pesos, okay? but other companies sees that the value of Jollibee is 200 pesos. So it's like a goodwill. Parang, uh, parang premiums okay um, of that certain company okay parang it is diba? it is like a premium um, to its actual value okay yan yung goodwill na tinatawag okay but dito so si PFRS3 um, in order to have some measurement to goodwill okay so naglabas siya ng um, computation so sabi niya Sabi ni PFRS3, okay, so goodwill daw is recognized or measured at excess of 1 over 2. Ano yung 1? So the aggregate value of the consideration transferred measured in accordance 
with these standards, which generally requires um, acquisition at date fair value, okay? the amount of any non-controlling interest. In a business combination, achieved in stages, the acquisition date, fair value of the acquirer's previously held equity interest in the acquiry. And the net of the acquisition date amounts of the identifiable assets acquired and liabilities assumed measured in accordance with this standard. Or in other words, um, goodwill, okay? Magkano ba yung uh, consideration na transfer ni acquirer Okay, less sa value ni acquiree. Okay, it's like that. In, in simple terms, ha, uh, magano ba yung consideration na transfer like cash assets okay, ni acquirer okay, sa value, sa number two, sa value ni acquiree. Okay. Or goodwill consideration transferred less acquirer's interest net fair value, fair value the acquirer's identifiable assets and liabilities. So you will appreciate more if my value to, if sa computation na. Okay? Now, pero yan lang muna for the goodwill. It's like a premium, okay? Kasi the acquirer is paying more, okay? It's paying more than the um, actual value ni acquiree. Okay? So the opposite of goodwill is a bargain purchase gain. So kung kanina, if piso yung value ni acquiree pero the acquirer yung ita-transfer niyang asset is like 5 pesos so parang may 4 pesos na goodwill okay while a bargain purchase gain naman is the exact opposite okay it's like a negative goodwill why um, if the value of that company is 5 pesos pero yung um, consideration na transfer is 1 peso only yan yung bargain purchase gain so it, it is the exact opposite of goodwill so when the acquirer's interest in the net fair value of the acquirer's identifiable assets is greater than the consideration transferred, okay, the difference is called a bargain purchase gain. So how do we account for that? Okay, so acquirer's interest net fair value um, of the acquirer's identifiable assets in liabilities is less than the consideration transferred. Okay, so um, it's like the opposite of the goodwill, right? So the bargain purchase gain, okay. Um, the PFRS three DAO requires that before a bargain purchase gain is recognized, so um, an entity or the acquirer and the acquiree, okay, should always reassess whether if all the assets is correctly identified, okay, all the assets liabilities lahat, lahat is correctly measured at fair value. And it has correctly measured the consideration transferred. So, sabi nila, um, or sabi ni standard, um, before we say na may bargain purchase gain, we should always check if meron bang talagang bargain purchase gain. Or um, we should always check um, everything like the, the, uh, the, the value of the assets, okay, the fair value ng mga consideration na transfer, and the um, actual value ni acquiree. Okay? Because it is very rare to find a bargain purchase gain. Okay? Because sa business combination, it is goodwill always. Okay? Because, uh, kasi in a common sense, why would an acquirer um, acquires a company which has a lesser value? Diba? Why would you buy something that is of less quality? It's like that, okay? So, usually, pagdating sa business combination, goodwill, okay? Goodwill, um, always, um, ano, it is always common na may goodwill, okay, compared to bargain purchase again, okay? So, any remaining excess should be recognized immediately in profit or loss. So, the purpose here is to make sure that the measurement at the acquisition date reflects all information available on that date, okay? Now, take note. One effect of recognizing a bargain purchase is that there is no recognition of goodwill. Yes, why? Kasi nga, when we say a bargain purchase gain, it's like a negative goodwill. Okay, so meaning walang goodwill na nangyari. And it is very, uh, very, ano ah, di pwede ah, na again, um, bargain, bargain purchase and goodwill cannot be recognized in the same business combination. So hindi pwedeng may bar gain on bargain purchase and at the same time may goodwill, bawal. It will never happen. Okay? 
dalawa lang yan. It's either a goodwill will recognize or a bargain purchase will be recognized. Okay? Gain on acquisition is never netted of simultaneously with positive goodwill. Okay? So it should be noted that under PFRS 3, it requires that gain be attributable to the acquirer only. Okay? Magre-record only ng bargain purchase gain kay acquirer. Okay, so the gain from a bargain purchase is recognized by the acquirer in statement of comprehensive income or income statement. Okay, under what statement? Profit or loss. Okay, hindi sa other comprehensive income ha, but on the profit or loss. Okay, so di ba so financial accounting? You have discussed that um comprehensive income is composed of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. So the bargain purchase gain is always um, recorded on the profit or loss section, right? And that would be all, okay? So anything, if my question, just contact me guys, ha, sa messenger or, yeah, sa aton nga um, um, group chat, okay? So thank you for listening.